Hey guys, it's JT Tran here again. Now today I'm bringing another special guest. You might recognize her, Isabel Du from The Amazing Race. And some of you guys might actually recognize her from our dating bootcamp training videos. Mm. One of my homegirls. So we're gonna talk about a really cool subject, which is how does an Asian American be successful in Hollywood? Because if you didn't know it, not only were you on The Amazing Race, you're gonna be on sci-fi pretty soon, so you have to check her out. Um, you're working actress and model. She's not a splasteress or you know, waitress <laughs> slash actress slash you know, bartender. Like you actually do this professionally now. Yes. Um, but the thing is like, I know a lot of Asians are getting into entertainment through a kind of a roundabout way, which is YouTube, like Cap Jumba and all these other guys. But you're going through Hollywood. Now, how are you finding that? Uh, you know, I think going through the old school route, there's something about it where, I mean, there's no wrong way, I think, to make it. Okay. There's no one way to make it. I think there's a bunch of routes to success. I mean, some people get really lucky. They happen to be there at the right time, right time and right place. And some people just feel more comfortable mm -hmm. being in front of the camera on their own first, you know, and they slowly transition and they kind of grow in front of the camera with their audiences on YouTube. And I, you know, I love... I love being out there. I mean, today, yeah. I mean, I just told you, I went to a casting, I went to one fitting, and then I had to drive all the way to Orange County for another fitting, drove all the way back here for this, and then after this, I have another casting. She's got her hustle on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lot of driving around. I get time to myself um, to think a lot, and, you know, I love meeting people in person. I love, like, the actual in-person hustle of it all, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's what makes me feel alive. That's what makes me want to keep going and makes me feel more motivated to be in the middle of it all. Right, right. Now, when I knew you back before you became famous, <laughs> like, you know, other... <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you know, how did you get on The Amazing Race? Like, how was that process? Because you know as well as I do, there aren't a lot of us out there yes. on TV. Like, how did that happen for you? First of all, huge Amazing Race fan. Huge, yeah. okay? And um, I've, uh, we tried out for that show, it was me and my boyfriend, we tried out for that show three times. Um, so it's a lot of persistence. We okay. kept going. It's all about taking the no's and just be like, throw it away and making it into a yes. Right. So, so you couldn't get like butthurt about just the rejection because that happens. Of course it No matter how beautiful or talented you are, yeah. rejection is going to happen. I right? love rejection. <laughs> I Even like me. that attitude. I love rejection <laughs> because every rejection brings you that much closer to success. Nice. Honestly. like Love that attitude. It makes you feel tougher. It makes you feel like, you know, I laugh at when people say the silliest things in front of my face now. I think I just, you're too young looking. You're too old looking. You have too much acne. You're too tall. You're too short. Too Asian. You're too Asian. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> or you look too half white. I'm like, I'm not even half white. Like, so you get it all. It's just kind of silly. I feel like it's about being confident with yourself okay. and just to keep going. It's, I know it sounds so cliche and everybody always says that, but you really just got to keep going. You got to keep being persistent. You got to keep on knocking every single door, window, roof, whatever it takes. Um, and, well, and I think you'll get there. Yeah, it's the same thing with my students. From what I tell them is every rejection just makes you stronger and it makes yes. you better. It's another lesson learned uh, in order to be successful, whether it's you know in front of a TV or in your job or in romance. Like you have to deal with rejection. Yes. No, I love that positive attitude that you have. Okay. So how was the amazing race? So you got on there. Um, how was? It? I'm just curious. Being yeah. on like primetime TV. I love this question because I think everybody mm -hmm. asks me and I, I think sometimes I answer it differently every single time. Um, it's everything you can imagine from one end of the spectrum to the other. It was exhausting, it was yeah. exciting, it was amazing, it was an adventure, it's a one in a lifetime thing, it was stressful. Me and Dennis have never fought as much as we did <laughs> We I, no, Seriously, at one point, we thought we were going to break up. It, mm. We seriously thought, we're like, after this, we're not going to tell the cameras, but we're done. We seriously <laughs> thought that was it, and we're like, oh. But, um, you know, somehow we made up, and no. we became even more in love with each other. Like, like you're for your relationship was forged in fire. It really yeah. was. I really, it really tested you. <laughs> so, um, and then also when we got eliminated, Aww. the day after was my birthday. Oh, that's <laughs> the, that's brutal. It was so brutal. I'm telling you, I have gotten rejected. 
rejected in so many ways and failed in so many ways that now it's like, oh, you know what? I've been through the worst already. I've already lost a million dollars. So everything else is like, Bleh. you know what right. I mean? Um, but the amazing race is pretty much everything we thought it would be, but I want to keep doing more. Yes, yes. <laughs> Gotta represent, girl. Yeah, and um, it was not just us that were um, Asian American on there. We actually have another couple on there, um, mm. Tim and TJ, hashtag college sweethearts. Oh. Um, they're a gay couple, and they were also Asian. Mm. Um, so it's cool to have, like, because, you know, actually, usually in shows, you see, like, oh, one token person, mm -hmm. um, but here you saw four of us. Yeah. That's kind of like, oh, that's... We were upping the numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slowly over time. I mean, you see on like ABC, um, you've got like Blackish, but also like fresh off the yes, boat. Totally. Like finally we're getting something. Like we've been wandering that desert, I think as Jeff Yang said, like wandering the TV desert until finally we get a little bit more media representation. So it's exciting. Yeah, as I always exciting. tell my students who just rail at the stereotypes, especially as Asian guys are against Asian guys, like in order to defeat the, those stereotypes, you need to show the world, like you need to show yourself of different race, people of different races, like connecting and being intimate. And that's how, you know, you do that. And you're doing your part by showing like, hey, you're this couple, it's like Asian girl and Asian guy. It's not like a stereotypical like white guy, Asian girl, but yes. good for you. I'm sure that's a t another topic that we'll talk about. Although there is one couple like that on this season. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> you're getting out there and you're, you're hustling. Like what are certain kind of obstacles that you feel that are unique to you as an Asian? Mm, I think um, that's that's a good question. I feel like, I'll tell you a story. Mm -hmm. About one time I went to an agency and I've gone to this agency several times. Everyone just keeps on me, You'll go, you should just go to this one. I'm like, all okay. right. Um, and I remember going there and had a strong body of work at that point already. And I remember them look, flipping through my book and saying, God, you have great work. They're like, but the thing is, we already have someone that looks just like you. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Well, I understand that, you know? But they showed me a photo of this girl, and she had like a short pixie cut, um, and she looked very ethnic. And I was like, really? You think I look just like her? Like, uh, Feel that Asian quota one. Yeah, and I'm like, you have 10 blonde girls right here. Like, mm -hmm. that look just, like, I can't tell. Are these the Olsen twins? And, and I remember feeling like, a little upset because why were they so much more willing to accept so many more people that were considered, I guess, I don't know, I don't want to say the norm, but you know, people that you'd see more often than versus somebody like me where I feel like we're kind of the minority, but they already filled out one quote yeah. you know, and they're yeah. done. I think the important thing from the, the perspective of businesses, and you sort of see this with ABC because they are like kind of the lead in more ethnic casting, and like Fresh Out the Boat, Blackish, all these these shows, they're making good numbers. Like Empire is like the Downton Abbey for African Americans. They've got like yeah. insane numbers. You really need to see that show. And <laughs> I just need to catch up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, the really the most important color is ultimately green. But sometimes you gotta like yes. you've gotta show them. Mm -hmm. And I know it's tough. So you encounter like some of my uh, guy friends who are, are actors. They'll be approached. Um, when they're rehearsing or trying out, it's like, oh, can, can you do that a bit more ethnic? Can you say that with an accent? Yes. Can you be a little bit more nerdy, yes. you know? And I know one of my buddies, like Elliot, he's like comedian slash actor, and he's like, nope, not gonna do it. But that's like, that's him. Mm -hmm. Like, he will not take any kind of stereotypical right. role. Like, have you ever been presented with that? Like, you, you would have to change your name? Because I know some actresses do that. They'll change their name to a white name, or, you know, they'll. Yeah kind of try to skate around there. Like, have you faced anything like that? Um, you know, with my name, like for example, Isabel Du, I think it's very ambiguous. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and that's actually my name. The only reason why I have that is because my mom loved the name Isabel. She loves all things no. French. But I do have a Vietnamese name, but she felt like, no, we should name her with an American name because it's the 80s, 90s. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, we want to like um, assimilate and, and be a part of the group. Um, and I do kind of wonder sometimes if maybe my name has helped me mm -hmm. because I did remember seeing like, you know, Freakonomics, the book, yeah. they talked about how um, if you had the same resume but with one with a more ethnic sounding name and then one with uh, a more general like John Smith name, mm -hmm. but they were the same exact resume with the same exact credentials, same exact history, and you sent them out to the same companies, 
the one that sounded more less ethnic, the general general one, generic one, got way more calls, yeah, yeah. way faster than mm -hmm. this one. Um, so I kind of wonder if I was already kind of destined in a certain path right. with the name thing. But um, oh my gosh, I just kind of like digress over there, and I don't remember <laughs> what your initial thing was. Um, was <laughs> <laughs> just like have you ever faced this more like that kind of ethnic casting where you're oh, yeah, you're yes, asked to be like hey can you be a little bit more fobby yeah, can, you be a massager, can you be more asian yes, you know person. um yeah all the time Did you like hey, you want a curly nail yes i i get asked to do the accents mm -hmm. um i don't get booked for them often <laughs> to be honest because i don't think i look the part yeah yeah um, and I, I'll be honest, I have taken some stereotypical roles in the beginning. I didn't want to. Yeah, but you gotta eat. But like, I, you, you gotta have build that body of work. Exactly. I hate to say it, and, and does that mean I'm selling out? Yeah, so it did. If you want to call it that, I guess I did sell out, but, but to me, that wasn't. Right. I didn't feel like I was selling myself. I was just trying to, like, I didn't know. I was still oblivious. I thought, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. And I started, started to gain more experience. I started to realize, you know what? I can turn down those roles. I don't yeah. need to go through that I don't need to fit myself in this in these roles that people just keep offering me like I didn't realize you could say no right you know right. Um, so I, once I started learning that and also I read um, what's that show about being uh, Jane the Virgin okay the right. actress who plays Jane Right. I read an interview about her, and I thought she had an amazing story uh, about how, and she got um, an award. She got awards for her role. She initially was offered a big role for um, the Maid show. Do you know what I'm talking about? Dirty. Uh, uh, Devious Maid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. So she was actually initially offered that role first. Mm -hmm. um, however, she turned it down because you know, even though she has respect for you know people who do have that kind of work. <laughs> She didn't want to perpetuate those certain roles for right, herself. Right. And so she was just kind of waiting along for that right role for herself that she felt like, okay, this is me. Mm -hmm. This will empower me. This will empower like people that I want to represent. Um, not necessarily like the people that people think you should represent. Okay. And um, she would turn down roles because she was Latina. So mm -hmm. she down, turned down certain roles and then finally she got that one. Yeah, she struck it big. And it's, she struck, struck it big and she held out. And I think being in this industry, what is hard to do is holding out a little bit. Yeah. Because you sometimes you don't know if you have that luxury to be able to say no. Um, so reading that made me feel inspired. I was like, oh, okay, like, mm -hmm. you know, I've already, I kind of knew that, but reading that made me feel like, okay, I really do have a choice to say, Yes, I can continue to perpetuate stereotypes, or I don't have to. But if you do, I understand. I get it. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like that, like um, the actor who plays the father of Eddie Huang in um, Fresh Off the Boat. He right. was also freaking <laughs> you know who in um, yeah. the interview. And if I was him, I would never do that role. But I get it. Yeah. I yeah. Understand why you took that role. You gotta do what you gotta do. Maybe you thought it was funny, and you maybe. You that affected you. Right. Um, well, I think it's important to, to uh, as Asian, Asian Americans, to get out there and to have that body of work yeah. because we're, we're barely starting to kind of build that critical mass. I think if you yes. look at the African American community and how they approach hip hop and TV or like the LGBT community, the fact that they've gained more exposure through TV. Yes, and they I think in the beginning you kinda have to like some people have to suck it up and they're not gonna get the mm -hmm. choices, sure. like more three dimensional roles, but you have to start somewhere. You do. Absolutely. You know? It's that's exactly it. And and that's why I am if you if there are certain couple of roles that are taken, I, I understand. Yeah. Maybe I'm a little bit more forgiving than others because I've right. been in that situation and other people are like, no, you know, but... Right. Well, I mean, you've also you've gotten to the point where you have that body of work, where you have a little bit of that luxury and that slack to pick and choose. Yeah. Um, and again, though, that's tough. Like, you've got to get your foot in the door. Yeah. So what would you recommend the, the, the new upcoming Asian American man or woman that was like, hey, I want to make it big in Hollywood. I'm going to move out to Los Angeles or New York. What would you recommend that he or she do? Like, what, what should they do to get their foot in the door? Do everything. Everything. Take everything that you can, honestly, because every single experience will teach you something, whether it was a terrible experience or whether it's a good experience. Just do everything and do something for God. 
God's sake. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit there and talk about it. Don't be like, I wish I could do this. I want to do this. No, freaking do something. Like anything, write something down. Like, even if it's something like, this is what I want to do. At least you're taking that step. Um, tell people that you want to do it. Get your hustle on. Yeah. Right. Tell people that this is what you want to do because you don't know who's listening and you don't know who is there listening. And they might be like, oh, I need to collaborate. Who could I think of? Oh, I remember this person telling me that they wanted to do this. I'm gonna call them up. Yeah. And more than often, that actually happens with me all the time. Like, I'll be like, I want to do this. I want to host this. And surprisingly, people are stuck to that, and they will come to you over time. But you have to make your your, your needs known because yeah. you can't be like that silent minority, which yeah. we're so famous for. Like, you have to hustle. You've got to stand up, and you've got to make that claim because yeah. no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. No one's gonna know what's really going on inside here. You gotta own it and be proud of it. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. I have. I've thrown my pride out the door so many times and <laughs> I feel like I'm actually more successful that way because when you're not embarrassed or ashamed, people find it relatable. They're, right. Because people, everyone's been ashamed or humiliated at some point, whether it's because of a failure or a rejection or something like that. And I think like when they hear somebody else, you know, when I hear somebody else failing, I'm like, oh, I feel like I can connect to that person. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there, I get it. So why wouldn't you share that and let people know that you've also been there? I feel like it creates a strong rapport between people and 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 it creates better collaborations even. Because here's yeah. another person that's like me and I want to work with them. Yeah. And there's also in this day and age other kind of more not as common collaborations because as mentioned like YouTube. There's all these kind of YouTube um, videos and skips and webisodes and uh, I can't really name anything off the top of my head but I know that people who have made it big on YouTube have been able to transition into more mainstream yes. work. It's really cool actually to see it. It's almost starting to change the industry. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking about this with somebody yesterday. Um, where he said that uh, he had this friend and she, she modeled with um, a huge agency, I'm not gonna say who it is, huge agency, and she was working every single day. And she was working a lot of work, making a lot of money. But guess what, they dropped her because she didn't have enough followers on Instagram. <laughs> Which I thought was insane, but yeah. at the same time not, because in this day and age, it's 2015, social media presence is just as important as your career. Yeah. It's just, and even if you don't like it, like, I don't like it, but I know that that's just part of the game. You it's have to, to like curate your image, whether it's on mm -hmm. Facebook or Instagram, because I've had this discussion before, and there's one girl who told me a couple of her secrets, so like she'll go to the gym, and she'll take a picture, and then she'll change and take a picture of that case like if she misses her gym workout she could just post something up the next yeah, week wow. is yes. that the secret oh my gosh I like you gotta do it <laughs> what people are doing man i've been doing it all wrong yeah <laughs> and it's just like you have to curate your image because yeah. if you're trying to accumulate those followers you have to present that kind of success or the casting director is looking for um so I guess we've been going on for a while here. Like, do you have any, like, what should they do when it comes to their, their headshots or, or, or sizzle reel? Mm -hmm. Like, any kind of quick thing that you can tell them, like, just to get that done and start getting their, their resumes out there? Sure. Um, I'd say for headshots, if you can't afford them, I mean, try to afford them because it's probably the best investment you'll make. Okay. Make sure it's with somebody legit. Um, but if for some reason you're in a tough bind, I'd say go to set websites like modelmayhem.com. Um, I got my portfolio built on there. I had so many free photo shoots in the beginning. And that's why I really like, you have like again, you have to start somewhere and it's all about like trading work with somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be other photographers who need that particular image in their book, but they they can't have it. So they're gonna work with somebody who will give it to them. And it's, it's to benefit everybody in that group. Like okay. think about as an Arab person, everything. So I would get my headshots for, done for free first. Right. Um, and uh, and then for, for your demo reel, I'd say do as much as you can and then just start compiling it. But what I've realized is even if it's not professional, it is okay. You want people to see what you can do and what you're potentially able to do. And over time, um, as you start to get more professional work, then you drop one down. You know, you, you drop one of those unprofessional Im yeah. images or videos, you throw it out and you keep adding it. That's how you keep building onto it. Yeah, it's, it's you, you, you know, the, the journey is, starts with that one small step. Yeah. And one after another. Exactly. And like, 
You know, I've been doing a lot of voice acting a lot lately. Really? Yeah, it's so crazy. I've been uh, doing a lot of voiceovers, and I've kind of just fallen into it. Oh, and, um, that's people that's actually request me mostly for Vietnamese voiceover, so I have a um, PG&E radio spot out right now. Okay. And uh, the thing is, when I booked that, I didn't have a professional wheel. None. I just sent in, I just had my laptop uh, open QuickTime and then put you just new, put it out there. Yeah, put new audio recording, recorded my voice from the laptop and then booked it. So you really don't have to have like, you don't have to have the bells and whistles and be fancy yeah. to like do it. But the enemy do. of being good at anything is trying to be perfect. So yes. just get it out there and through iteration you can make it better and better. You know what I just thought like, cause you said voiceover, I'm like, yeah. Mulan, you hear like the live action Mulan? <laughs> Isabel Du for Mulan, right here. Right, Mulan. <laughs> I can't that, say, but I'm sure someone else can do my voice over, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so, any last pieces of advice for any Asian American trying to make it big in Hollywood? Um, I would say uh, this is my favorite thing to give out now, which is don't be afraid to take a break. Okay. Don't be afraid to take a break from whatever it is, whether it's your actual work or even from this industry. And then, if you need to come back, come back. Sometimes you just need a break to refresh yourself and you know what? You will be a different person after that break completely yeah. and who knows you might book even more because what I realized I've had to take a couple breaks where people are like what happened to her? Where did she go? Everyone loves a good comeback story. Okay? <laughs> Everybody loves it and then after your break you are a completely different person. Mm -hmm. I mean you're not the same person even yesterday right. or last year and you will find a newfound confidence and, and epiphanies that will help you book more stuff. Yeah, you're you're kind of giving them the gift of missing you. Oh, yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, thank you so much. Yeah, so thanks. how can our audience find a little bit more about you? How can they follow you and, and, and big up your Instagram? Oh, is this your, where I like <laughs> yeah. promote myself? Um, so you guys can check out my website at www.isabeldu.com. We'll put it in the box, check it out. <laughs> or, um, and then you can follow my Instagram at isabel.du. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, All right. Be sure to subscribe, guys, and stay tuned for the next video. Bye, guys. Why do so many white guys like Asian girls? Or like, why are so many Asian girls dating white guys? Because I went through that period in college where I was like that angry Asian man because all I saw were like white guys with Asian girls. And I actually had one girl tell me